power of recursive algorithms. In this part, we will see one example. And in this example, we will really see the power of recursive algorithm. So that means without using recursive algorithm, you cannot even imagine how to solve it. Yeah, so it's a good example. Actually, this example, although from our textbook, but we also will learn it in 2250. We already learned there in C, C++. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But here, we will do a lot more analysis. Yeah. In CS2250, so we, we couldn't do deep understanding on this problem. Yeah. All right, so let's start. Yeah. First, we consider the problem with relatively small size only three disks. So you can see only three disks. Yeah. We follow these rules. Yeah. I know you understand the other rules, but here let me just quickly go through these three rules. Only one disk can be moved at a time from one peg to another peg, one disk at a time. The first rule. Second rule, a disk cannot be placed on top of a smaller disk. Okay, another rule. You need to maintain certain order. Yeah, rule number two. Rule number three. All disks must be stored on a peg except while being moved. Yes. Uh, rule number three, also important. You cannot place the disk on the table here, no. You know, for the temporary storage, you're not allowed to do that. Otherwise, you know, the problem is too easy. You just arrange on your table, so then, no, that's too easy. So, yeah, so the rule number three, also very important, yeah. If you follow all these three rules, then the problem is non-trivial, otherwise, if you remove rule three, it's trivial. You do not need to solve it. Everyone can solve it easily, right? Yeah. All right, so under these three rules, let us solve the problem for a general problem size n, not just the three. Yeah. Here in the picture, it is three, but we need to imagine we need to extend it to a general problem size n yeah. analysis. Yeah. All right. How to solve general problem with n disks? We know it's hard. So given n, imagine 100 disks. Can you imagine how hard to solve it? Yeah. In our lifetime, if we just move one disk in one second, we cannot complete it in our lifetime. So you know how hard it is, right? Yeah. So let us start with small problem size. Start with n equals one or two. That's trivial, right? One or two, it's trivial. So I do not need to show you how to do it here. Yeah. Now, when we increase the problem size gradually, one disk at a time, we can use the recursive thinking here. Yeah. So let's do the thinking, the special thinking here. Yeah. When we solve the problem of size three, we can assume that we have already solved the problem of size two. Why we can assume? Because we have 100% confidence we can solve it, right? Do you have 100% confidence solving a problem with two disks? I think yes, the answer. If you say yes, then when we cannot assume it, right? 
We can do it, so we can assume it. We just assume what we can do, right? That logic is fine, right? We just assume what we can do. Yeah. So it's all right, no problem. Yeah. All right. Here, let us use the recursion method. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here, you can see. Even if n equals three, for most people or for many people, the problem is not trivial. They need to spend some time to work it out, right? It's not trivial. Yeah. All right. So here, let us try to solve it. Explicitly, or we do experiment here, get a hands-on experience. That's important. With that experience, then we can get some common rules from our experience. Yeah. All right. So let's do the experiment. Yeah. We use the diagram. When we start, that's the initial state. Step one, we move the top disk to peg number three. All right. Although you can move to peg number two. Yeah. It depends on what is the destination peg, right? What is the destination peg? Here, let's assume the third one is the destination peg. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, based on our experience, yeah. you need to play around a little bit. Yeah. All right. So we move the smallest disk on peg three. Yeah. After that, middle, mid size disk to peg number two. Yeah. Following the rule. Yeah. No violation. Yeah. So then the smallest disk moved back to peg number two no violation yeah then the here you can see after these moves actually we solve the p of two problem size of two yeah we solve it right we move the top two disks to another peg yeah you can see yeah that's the p of two yeah next we move the largest disk to peg number three. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then we need to do another P of two. Yeah, because we need to move these two pegs, uh, two disks to peg three. Yeah. So that is another P of two problem. Okay. Now let's do that p of two problem another time smallest disk moved to peg one mid-sized disk moved to peg three then smallest disk is moved back to peg three then we are done then we are done yeah so we solve the problem p of three the next question, how do we generalize the solution to n disks? Yeah. So you try to look at the whole picture. When we solve P of 3, we, we need to solve P of 2 first. Then the P of 2 we need to do another time. In between, in between, we do P of two time, two, two times, we move the largest disk to our destination peg. So that's the observation we have from this experiment. Now we generalize this observation to the general problem size N. So the next 
Let's work on the general case. All right. But here you can imagine without using recursion how hard it is for the general case. I cannot do it. Without using recursion, I cannot. I will get lost. Okay. So when I move this here and there, I will get lost. Okay. Yeah. I cannot keep track of all the disks. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now we use the recursion method. Yeah. And this time it's the general case. Yeah. Size m, but we can assume p of m minus 1 could be solved recursively. Yeah. All right. So now let me use the still the diagrams to understand the whole procedure. Yeah. All right. Although here I still use three disks, but we just imagine these three disks represent n disks because drawing n disks not easy. So I just use the same picture figure yeah, to do it. Yeah. So here we have p of n to solve. In order to solve p of n, we need to solve p of n minus 1 first. Hey, okay, yeah. So p of n minus 1 to the middle peg. We call a temporary peg. Okay. From peg, temp peg, and a two peg. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, next step, we move the largest disk to the two peg, the destination peg. Okay. After that, another p of n minus one, another p of n minus one from the ten peg to the two peg. Okay. Yeah. Then we solve the whole problem. We can see for such a complicated problem, if we use recursion, how easy it is. You can see, look at this picture, how easy it is to represent the whole idea. That's the power of recursion. That from this picture, you can see the power of recursion. Okay. All right. The last step, we need to write a code. Here it is the code. You know, move disks, recursive function, the definition. Yeah, so this function I took from CS2250. I don't know if you still remember it. I just took from my 2250 notes. Uh, I taught it once before, so I took from my notes. Yeah. All right, so with this, you can see a pretty complicated problem can be solved in this very neat way. So neat. Yeah. So powerful, this method. Yeah. All right, so we finish our part 8.2.